Hello, Bobcats. My name is Harper Moore, and my parents will be reading Chapter Eleven out of the Lemonade War, called "A Total Loss." A total loss. Goods so damaged that there's no point in repairing them, or they can't be repaired at all. Hi, Bobcats. We're Harper's mom and dad. That's right. And we're going to read to you Chapter Eleven out of the Lemonade War. All right. Chapter Eleven is called "A Total Loss." The first cup was an easy sell. The second cup too. It was on the third cup that a little girl, about six years old, said, "Ew, there's a bug in my drink." Then her brother said, "There's one in mine too." Gross," said an older boy on a skateboard. "There are like three in mine. I want my money back, man," he said, dumping his lemonade on the ground. The mother of the little girl and boy looked into their cups carefully. I think you need to check your lemonade, honey," she said to Evan. Evan unscrewed the cap, and everyone looked in. The surface was swimming with dead bugs, fruit flies, worms, and a soggy brown caterpillar. Yuck! Oh my goodness," said the mother. The boy started spitting on the ground like he was going to die. The girl started wailing, "Mommy, mommy! I drink bugs. I have bugs in my tummy." Evan couldn't believe his eyes. How did this happen? Did they crawl in somehow? They couldn't have. He had screwed the lid on tightly. He was sure of it. And anyway, one or two bugs crawling in, maybe, but fifty dead fruit flies and two inchworms and a caterpillar—it just wasn't possible. Evan was burning with embarrassment as everyone looked at him and his buggy lemonade. Frantically, he reached into the cooler and started to scoop out the dead bugs with his hands. Ah,、uh, sweetheart," said the mother. "You can't sell that lemonade." "I'll get them all," said Evan. "I'll get every last one out." "No, dear, you really can't. You need to dump it out," she said. Evan looked at her like she was crazy. "Dump it out? Dump it out?" He'd spent forty dollars of his hard-earned money on that lemonade, and another dollar for the cups. He wasn't going to dump it out. "I'll do it at home," he said. No, you should do it here. I think I need to be sure it's all disposed of properly. Evan looked at her. He didn't know her, but he knew her type. Boy, did he know her type! She was the kind of mother who thought she was the mother of the whole world. If you were on a playground and she thought you were playing too rough, she'd tell you. If you were chewing gum in line at the Seven Eleven, she'd say, "I sure hope that's sugarless." Mothers like that never minded just their own business or just their kids' business. They thought they had to take care of every kid in the kingdom. It's too heavy for me to dump," he said. "I'll take it home, and my mom can help." "I'll help," said the busybody mother of the world. "All we need to do is tip it a little." She grabbed one handle of the big cooler. Evan had no choice but to grab the other handle. Together they tipped, and the lemonade poured out of the top of the cooler. They poured and poured and poured. The lemonade sparkled in the sunlight like a bejeweled waterfall, and then disappeared without a trace, soaking into the parched September grass. As the last sluice of lemonade slipped out of the cooler, a stick of mud poured out. "Oh my goodness!" said the mother. Evan couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe how quickly his victory had turned to defeat. It was just like the lemonade; it had disappeared into the grass, leaving nothing behind. A total loss. The mother smiled sympathetically as Evan returned her two dollars. The skateboard dude had already skated off with his refund. There was nothing to do but go home. Evan walked slowly, dragging the wagon with the empty cooler rattling inside. With every step he took, the wagon handle poked him in the rear end. Step, poke. Step, poke. He felt like someone was nudging him forward. Evan, Mom wants to see you in her office right away. That had been weird, because Mom had had no idea what he meant. I didn't call you. I didn't call anyone. She had said, "I've been on the computer." Evan, Mom wants to see you. He had been coming up the stairs. Jessie had been in the garage. She had looked anxious. Right away, she had said. Evan stopped walking. He stared at the empty cooler. 
Then he started to run. The wagon bounced crazily under the uneven sidewalk. Twice it tipped over. What did it matter? Thought Evan angrily. There's no lemonade to spill. By the time he got home, he had it all figured out. He looked in the kitchen trash and he found three Ziploc bags, inside out and sticky with lemonade. He shook the fruit bowl and noticed how few fruit flies took to the air. If he'd had the right materials, he would have dusted the cooler for fingerprints. But there was really no need for that. He knew what he would have found. Jesse was the one for this. That rat! That lousy, stinking rat of a sister, he shouted. He went back to the garage and he kicked his wagon. He knocked the cooler to the floor. He tore up his Lemonade on Wheels sign into a dozen pieces. He was going to lose. She had a hundred dollars. He was sure of it. And he had just 62 left. Tonight, before the fireworks, when they counted their money, she would be the winner and he would be the loser. Winner takes all. Loser gets nothing. It was so unfair. Evan stomped upstairs to his room. He slammed the door so hard it bounced open again. When he went to close it, he was staring across the hallway straight into Jessie's room. He could see her neatly made bed covered in cush pillows, the poster of Bar Harbor from their trip to Maine this summer, and her night table with Charlotte's web at the ready. Evan crossed the hall and then paused at Jessie's door. There was a rule about not entering. Well, she'd broken the rules first. Even though there wasn't really a rule about putting fruit flies in lemonade, it was clearly a dirty trick. Evan walked in and went straight to Jesse's desk drawer. There was that fake pack of gum. Inside, the key. Did she really think he didn't know where she hid it? He'd seen her slip the key inside the box when he was passing by on his way to the bathroom. Jesse was smart, but she wasn't very smooth. He'd known for months where the key was hidden. He just hadn't bothered to use it. Until now. It took him a while to find the lockbox. He checked the bureau drawers first and then under Jesse's bed, but finally he found it hidden in her closet. Again, not very smooth. Evan carried the key in the lockbox back to his room and sat on the bed. He put the key in the lock and opened the top. Then, the moment of truth, he lifted out the plastic change tray. There were a whole bunch of scraps of paper on top, and there was a folded index card too. Evan moved these aside and found a $10 bill paperclipped to a birthday card. Under that was an envelope labeled pre-war earnings with $4.42 inside it. That was the money Jesse had before the lemonade war began. She'd kept it separate, just like she had promised. Next to it was a fat envelope labeled lemonade earnings. Evan opened the envelope. Inside, the bills were arranged by ones, fives, and tens. All the bills were facing the same way, so that the eyes of George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Alexander Hamilton were all looking at Evan as he counted out the cash. Two hundred and eight dollars. There it was, the winning wad. Evan thought of how hard he'd worked that week. In the blazing sun, in the scorching heat. He thought about the cooler full of lemonade pouring into the grass. He thought about handing over his $62.11 to Jesse and how she'd smile and laugh and tell, tell everyone that she'd won the lemonade war. The guys would all shake their heads. What a loser. Megan would turn away. What a stupid jerk. Evan slammed the lid down on the lockbox. He stuffed the envelope in his shorts pocket. He was not going to let it happen. He wasn't planning to keep the money. Not for good. But he wasn't going to let her have it. Not tonight. When it came time to show their earnings, he'd have $62.11 and she'd have nothing. 
he'd give her the money back tomorrow. Maybe the day after that, but not tonight. He suddenly felt a desperate need to get out of the house, as fast as he could. So he shoved the lockbox back into Jesse's closet, the key back into the fake pack of gum. Hey, Mom, he shouted, not even waiting for her to answer back. I'm going to school to see if there's a game. Okay? What's going to happen next week? Have to wait and see. Bye. Bye.